You know, we can be in many, many other places. So I know this is what we do here is intentional. And we come because we are called. Not by me or by Mark, or, but by God. And we come to celebrate as a community that God continues to trust us with the Spirit. So let that Spirit flow through you. We need of you, of your trust, first of all, of your talents, of your participation. God has already done for us what we need. Now it is up to us to do what God commands us to do. So we make our beginning in the name of God the Father who, who created us, Jesus his Son, who redeemed us, and the Holy Spirit who sustains and sanctifies us. Amen. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We are truly sorry we not be with him. In your compassion, forgive us our sins. Please be God. Since we have failed to turn us against you, all us by your spirit, so that we may be in the spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, we have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen us with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts, in our hearts, through faith.
God, justice, and love, you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need and awaken us to the needs of others. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us listen and let us to God's word. reading from Zephaniah chapter 1 verses 7 and 12 to 18. Be silent before the Lord God for the day of the Lord is at hand. The Lord has prepared a sacrifice. He has consecrated his gifts. At that time I will search Jerusalem with lamps and I will punish the people who rest complacently on their dregs, and those who say in their heart, the Lord will not do good, nor will he do harm. Their wealth shall be plundered, and their houses laid waste. Though they build houses, they shall not inhabit them, and though they plant vineyards, they shall not drink the wine from them. The great day of the Lord is near, near, and hastening fast. The sound of the day of the Lord is bitter. The warrior cries aloud there. That day will be a day of wrath, a day of distress and anguish, a day of ruin and devastation, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of trumpet blasts and battle cry against the fortified cities and against the lofty battlements. I will bring such distress upon people that they shall walk like the blind because they have sinned against me, the Lord. They have sinned against the Lord. And their blood shall be poured out like dust and their flesh like dung. Neither their silver nor their gold will be able to save them on the day of the Lord's wrath, in the fire of his passion, the whole earth shall be consumed for a full and terrible end he will make of all the inhabitants of the earth. The word of the Lord. Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to another. When they say there is peace and security, then suddenly. 
charge of many things. Enter into the joy of the master. Then the one who had received the one talent came forward saying, Master, I knew you were a harsh man, reaping what you did not sow, and gathering what you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid. I went and I hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But the master replied, You wicked and lazy slave, you knew that you did not reap where I did not sow, and gather where I did not scatter. Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers so on return. I would have received with my own interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with the ten pounds. But to all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As to this worthless slave, throw him behind the darkness. We will be weeping and not showing teeth. This is the gospel of the Lord. way back from 
Institute of Preaching Peace. And um, he was fond of saying that parables are not pointed. You know, people always ask, well, what's the point? And he said, parables are not pointed. They're rounded. Rounded. We read them, we contemplate them, and they kind of come back around and show us the kind of barometer of our faith. A barometer of what we are thinking about God, about our relationship to God, and about our place in the world. By the way, I, I should ask you, what's a talent? You just read this whole story about talents. What's a talent? At this point, worth how much? Professional person see that answer. Um, okay. So, there is a little bit of scholarly debate about this. But the best answer I found is that talent was a unit of exchange worth roughly 6,000 pounds of silver, mm. which in those days would be 17 years wages. So the man who had received five talents, he got what, any matching this here? It's like 85, like 85 years, okay, 85 years for the wages. Okay, the guy who got two talents, 34 years worth of wages. And even the fellow who received a paltry one talent, that's still 17 years worth of wages. These were clearly well trusted servants. Now, we, we love to talk about the guy who received five. He got five. He was industrious. He made five more. The guy got two. Not bad. He made two more. But that poor fellow, the poor fellow with only one. Oh, what happened? What went wrong? Before I go any further, I want to ask you to do something a little bit strange. Who, me? Strange? I want you to close your eyes for a minute, and I want you to imagine, I want you to call upon your imagination. You know, somebody once said, imagination, imagination is the only thing that all human beings, whether they're good or they're bad, regardless of their beliefs, Imagination is the only thing that human beings have that's truly sacred. So, I ask you to call upon your imaginations and ask you to imagine which person you are in this story. Maybe the person who received five. Are you the person who received two? Are you the person who received one? Are you the master who gave out points? Who might you be in this story? Now, you can open your eyes now. Unless you're sleeping, you can keep your eyes closed. If when I was first going over this, my first thought I was trying to get everybody together to have them talk about what they thought they were. Unfortunately, I felt better about it. And I said, no, not only is that invasive, that is a way to make myself very uncomfortable. So I said, no, how do you think about it? Between you and God. Now, if you're the person who has five, and you're out there making five more, then I congratulate you. And realistically, you probably don't need to listen to the rest of this, so just relax, and I don't plan to go on too long. And if you're the person who made 
two. Well, you can listen with one ear and the other ear out. But I suspect that your life, the grandest plurality of people, you might think of yourself as a person who's only been given one. At least, that's how I feel most days. Most days, I'm a lot like that guy. What was his problem anyway? The master calls him lazy, sinful, the harsh judgment. He was afraid, you know that, he said he was afraid. Oh, master, you're a harsh man. You're you gather, you do not scatter. You're a harsh man. I'm afraid to lose this treasure. Maybe as he was accused of, he was just lazy. All I, I, I don't know, this looks like a lot of work. I mean, even one talent. A lug around with 6,000 pounds of gold in a car. I don't know how I'm going to do this. I submit to you, most of us, at least some of the time, are like that man with only one talent. And we are afraid. We are afraid of what might happen if we let go of that one talent. Now, what's interesting to me is that this is a parable of the kingdom of God. It's not really meant to be an economics lesson, although it probably works that way as well. So when I looked at this, I thought, well, okay, individuals. What about communities? What about church groups? What about whole denominations? What are we at Good Shepherd Luther? Are we the mighty church that has received five talents and we're out there making five more. When are we going to build our arena stadium? It's actually anyway, Pastor. You got it. I'm sure. You and me both. <laughs> um, are we the one with two? Thriving community church is thinking, well, we got out of the service. We got so many people here. Or are we like the man with one? Are we afraid? Now, there's a reality, a reality about five and two and one. There are only so many people in the world with five pounds. I'm not a double one. The truth of the matter is, they could be scary. And again, if you are one, no offense. I mean, this person with five pounds, I don't know. Just into two. Um, maybe. Maybe. What two? Even that's kind of scary. I submit to you the whole world is built upon those with one talent. One talent of women and men. Churches, governments, towns, businesses are built with people with one talent. Or with a fraction of a talent. A little bit of a talent. All that's necessary is for us to relinquish the fear, to give up being afraid, that sense that we might lose this. Trust that God trusts us. Trust that if we fail, and believe me, I know about that. 
If we fell, God would be there to reach out, pick us up, dust us off, and say, go out again. If you're a person with one talent, or a fraction of a talent, then this is for you. Some years ago, I was preaching. Now, we used to be able to call an old age home. I guess we can't call it that anymore. It's a retirement facility. Uh, we got all kinds of good names in places now. Anyway, it's an old age home. I was full of old people. How do I define old, by the way? Someone at least 10 years older than myself. It'll always be that. If God grants it, like our, our son, you know, if I raise in strength, I make it to 80. 90 years old. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm preaching the service. I don't know if it was the stats or someone, something like that. And one of the people there, I guess when you get to a certain age, you have temerity. By the way, that's my talent. By the way, words. Um, when you get to a certain age, you have temerity. You just feel like you can say anything. So she said to me, Pastor, what, what, what can I do? I'm 87 years old. I'm confined to a wheelchair. I can't have breakfast without someone helping me. I can't answer nature's call without someone helping me. What can I do? I said, can you pray? Can you pray for the world around you? Can you smile at those people who help you with breakfast and other things? Can you speak out like you just spoke out to me? Because if you can, then you're giving back to God what God gave you. Now, by now you've got the point. I just want to do one more thing. Once again, I'm going to ask you to close your eyes. When I ask you to go back in that world of sacred imagination, I'm going, to, I'm going to ask you to think about what your talents might be. The uh, derivation, the English word talent, the coin, the word gift and giftedness all have an interesting etymological background. Possibly only interesting to a geek like me, but if you're curious, you can ask me later. I want you to imagine, nay, I want you to ask God. I want you to put some trust in God, the God that we will confess in a few moments in the words of the creed. I want you to ask God. If you don't know what your talent or talents might be, I want you to ask God to show you that talent. And if you do know what that talent is, you have an idea what that talent is, but you're afraid. Afraid to use it. Afraid to lose it. Then I want you to ask God to enable you to relinquish that fear. Ask God. Hear now these words and join me in this prayer. Oh God, we come before you in your holy house. We come before you as we prepare ourselves to take you into ourselves through your most blessed body and blood. We ask that you might guide us, that you might give us direction. We ask for this whole assembly, this entity, this organization, which has been named for you, the Good Shepherd, that you might show us, clarify for us, how we might best use the talent or talents which you bestow. Show us, teach us, guide us, even as you call us to labor in your kingdom, building your kingdom here 
in this present world, one stone at a time, one brick at a time, one soul at a time. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Father, where truth has been spoken, we ask that these words may take root in our hearts and in our minds and spring up to bear abundant fruit. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you all for your time and attention.
Gracious God, you give talents and gifts to all your people. And you equip the church to serve. Turn us from fear and self-serving ways. That we use our talents to glorify you and encourage our neighbor. Hear us, O Lord. Your mercy is You have been our dwelling place from one generation to another. Sustain the life of the planet. Protect farmlands and harvest. Direct all people in wise stewardship of all the earth's resources. Hear us now. You call us to honesty and integrity. Instill these values in the hearts of all nations and their leaders. All our politicians, both locally and nationally, we pray that our Lord may be the guiding light in their lives. Free any who are oppressed, expose all corruption, and bring redemption to victims of injustice. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is grace. You teach us to count our days that we may gain a wise heart. Where there is sickness or sorrow, bring healing, and where there is no loneliness, reveal your love in community. We remember before you Roy, Matthew, those who are sick in our community. My sister Mary. Sire. Angela. Those who need and who have asked of our prayers. Hear us, O God. May we pray for the faith, formation, ministries of our church, for our children, youth, adults, those who study your word, the breastplate of faith and law. Shape us by your love and show us how to encourage one another, how to heal one another. Gracious God, you are faithful in all generations for the promise of life and rest and for the witness of those who have died in faith. We praise your goodness. Hear us, O oh God. We offer our spoken prayers and those held in our hearts, trusting in your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. The peace of the Lord be with you. And also the Lord be with you. Let us offer to one another Christ's gift of peace. Please be with you. Please be with you. Please be with you. Please be with you. Please be with you.
by way 